Now, one commonly used way of visualizing transfer functions in engineering applications are the so-called Bode plots. Bode plots have the frequency on the x-axis, and now I'm using the frequency f in hertz here. Some people prefer to plot the angular frequency omega, then everything on the x-axis is getting scaled by a factor of 2 pi. You plot the amplitude of the transfer function, very often in decibel, and you plot the phase in degrees or in radians. Now note that, again, as we have seen from the Fourier series, the amplitude here is in logarithmic scale due to the decibels. The frequency axis is in a logarithmic scale, and the y-axis of the phase is in a linear scale. We will use these plots a lot when we look at applications of the transfer functions, for example, in filters in the next chapter of the course. But before applying it to useful circuits, I would like to make some generic comments on what happens with a zero at a given frequency in the Bode plot. At that frequency, the amplitude starts to rise by plus 20 dB per decade. If we have a pole at a certain frequency here, P, the amplitude starts to fall with minus 20 dB. If you have two zeros or two poles at the same frequency, the rise of the amplitudes are summing up and you start to rise or fall by plus or by minus 40 dB. Now a zero is also impacting the phase, which gives a rise of the phase for S going towards infinity of plus 90 degrees per zero. So if you have two zeros, the phase of the transfer function would rise by 180 degrees. And at the exact frequency of the zero, the transfer function has a rise in the phase of plus 45 degrees. And that is again per zero you have. And equivalently, for a pole, the phase is falling with 90 degrees per pole for S approaching infinity, and at the exact frequency of the pole, the phase of the transfer function falls by 45 degrees.